looking at the Competition Commission's finding in, findings into the milling industry. We know that Tiger Brands and we've also seen Premier Foods being granted un, uh, conditional immunity at this stage. But of course, there is going to be a 10% fine uh, imposed on certain companies. Uh, that's correct. This is a, a classic cartel, essentially, that met, uh, decided on price increases, limited discounting, and allocated customers in wheat flour mm. in South Africa. Okay, looking at the 10% the fine that's going to be uh, uh, given by uh, Godric Milling, of course, and we'll also be seeing Food Corp uh, and Tribunal, f uh, oh, sorry, the Pioneer Foods section as well. So we are going to be seeing some pressure coming through for these companies, but at the end of the day, it was quite a big cartel, and you have been investigating since 2006, if I'm not mistaken. That's right, really since, since mm -hmm. the end of 2006, early 2007. Uh, I mean the fines need to be big because uh, there has to be deterrent effect. The whole idea is that deterrent should be strong enough that firms don't engage in this conduct mm -hmm. to start off with. Well, why do you think they've been engaging in this conduct, uh, Simon Brown? It's not only just in the milling industry and, of course, the bread industry. It's been milk. It's been a whole bunch of uh, different sectors as well. I, I think uh, there, there are a bunch of reasons. I mean, I think perhaps there are two. I mean, cartels in this country, which I think is a great name for them, used to be legislated. We used to have a bread board and a milk board, and, and, and it, you know, the government would invite you to come sit around a table and decide what your pricing should or shouldn't be. And I think some hangover from that. And then obviously a sense of, you know, I, I suppose, thinking, well, you know, we can do this and, and there won't be any repercussion. And that's why I think it's correct that, that there needs to be a step in there with really, really hefty fines. Uh, unfortunately, the shareholder ultimately pays the fine. Mm -hmm. um, and what we don't see is the shareholders revolting and, and, and you know, taking the board to task. But there is this across industries all around South Africa. The one thing we know when the Competition Commission comes knocking these days, be afraid, be very afraid. And from an investor perspective, when there's been smoke, there's been fire every time. And it, we've had Sassel in there. We, we've had the, 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 the drug companies have been hauled before, and there certainly is a prevalence. I suppose we're worming it out, but I think it's way too prevalent. Mm. Well, do you think we're worming it out? Or are we getting uh, things done at the Competition Commission? I'm not sure. I mean, we've been shocked by the extent of cartel conduct. Uh, I mean, the first five years or so of the Competition Authorities, I mean, the new act came in 1999, there wasn't very much. Uh, and uh, partly it's because cartels are secret. And the, le the leniency program, which incentivizes people to come forwards and, and rat on the others, has been very useful for us because that gives very high powered incentives for companies to, 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 to come forward. And the message that we would say to shareholders is make sure your company is the one that's coming forward at the beginning because then you're going to get off without paying a penalty. Of course, they get conditional immunity. One of the questions that many have been asking is where the money actually goes. So, you know, companies get fined 10 percent. Where does the money go? It goes to National Treasury. Okay. Yeah. At time, do you think it should go to national treasury? Should the consumer be reimbursed? Well, I, I suppose in a sense that's how we reimburse. I mean, the ideal would be is the people who got ripped off in the bread market or the milk market or whichever one it was. But uh, that's not practical. We can't go out there into the broader community in South Africa and hand out bits here and everywhere. I suppose it goes to national treasury. Praveen Gordon perhaps can be a little less painful in the next round of budget with regard to tax and the like. Um, but there is a sense, and, and, and having spoken to some consumers, that there's a bit of a disconnect, that they, they feel that they've been you know, done in that they were the subject you know, the, at, at the receiving end of it, but they don't seem to have s directly seen a benefit. The benefit, I suppose, also flows through and that the cartels are broken and that gets more competition going in this space. What kind of impact did this uh, cartel have on food inflation? Well, essentially it, it was about raising prices and limiting discounts, but uh, in our analysis it was very important also in preventing prices from falling. So if you look at bread and flour prices, um, over time they go up but they don't go down. Uh, and so with volatility in the RAND and international markets, it has a direct impact on inflation because what's happening is prices are going up very quickly when the RAND depreciates uh, and you know, monetary policy is adjusting, but the prices don't come down. It takes a long time to work through the system. So there's important implications for, for monetary policy here as well, I guess. Okay, so what can we expect to pay for a loaf of bread going forward? I see, we don't give you that answer. <laughs> we don't regulate. We want... Uh, uh, the philosophy behind the Competition Act mm -hmm. is, is, is deterrence around cartels. We want competition. Competition should set the prices competitively. People make money because they sell better products. They put effort into marketing the products. We don't say what the price should be uh, at the end of the day. It's got to be an outcome of that, of that process. Mm -hmm. What, what do you think is going to happen in, in this sector? And of course, also just give us your view about all the sectors that are under the spotlight. You've got the construction industry, you've got cement, you've got uh, iron ore as well. 
I, I, ultimately, it, it leads to a better deal for consumers. I mean, in, in the short time, will the bread price fall? It depends where wheat goes. But now we know down the road that should wheat come down and, and currency move in your favour, that, that bread prices can come down. We move to construction. I mean, how train and soccer stadiums, etc. If there's a cartel in, a cartel in existence there, then, then the government's overpaying or, or the private sector, whoever it might be in that space. What you want is that competition so that you get true f sort of price discovery, much as the stock market works. You want that proper price, not a price set in some sort of you know, smoky back room. Okay, so what can we expect from a competition commission going forward, Simon? Well, cartels are a big priority. We've, there's going to be quite a, a few more that we're working on, uh, big investigations underway, cement, construction, etc. So I think the big news is still going to be more about cartels going forwards. Mm, okay, well, thank you very much for your time. That was, of course, Simon Roberts, Chief Economist for the Competition Commission. Uh, Simon, uh, just looking at the overall markets today, and we are in negative territory. We lost some ground on Friday. We gained one and a quarter of a percent. Uh, it's quite interesting that we are oscillating around the 28,000 level, but what is going to push us higher from here? Well, it's going to push us anyway. I mean, at the moment, we're going sideways. We go up a bit, we go down a bit pretty much being sideways all year and it's a terrible market we're seeing volumes coming down today we opened at the level and pretty much went sideways you showed the graphic just before I came on market largely went sideways I think what we're going to really need to drive this market is a shock bad news which will push it down I don't see that coming out we're going to start needing really good news coming through and I don't know what that individual news is going to be it needs to be a collection it's largely out there and I think maybe the worry is is that the results the earnings season pretty much behind us results largely in line with what was expected but looking forward there was a lack of bullishness and maybe the market's waiting for 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 the next sort of set of results I hope not because that that's six months off mm, which means that markets will remain flat if uh, you are right looking at some of the companies that made some moves today Xara a gain of 2.7 percent MTN up 1.3 percent Liberty Holdings a gain of 1.2 percent yeah Xara. And, and, and not many of them had been had been uh, not many green stocks at all in the market uh, not a heck lot there. Exara uh, been moving fairly well. Nice, it's a coal people uh, like the coal space. MTN took a fair bit of a hit recently, and and again seems to be kind of like range bound. We saw a bit of buying coming in there, but nothing on on particularly uh, strong volumes at all. And and Libholt really we're looking there more than anything. Is is in that space? There's been some activity recently, mm -hmm. and I think people are sort of shifting portfolios and positions there to sort of get to where they perceive is the correct one. Okay, and also just uh, looking at the losers, we have seen, you know, BHP Bulletin uh, down 2.4%, Goldfields also down 2%. So it's really just been about the current uh, the currency play with regards to commodities as well. So no surprise there. But you mentioned Capitec off air, and uh, we've seen some interesting moves on this stock, even though it's not on the top 40. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it, it hit 99.99 today. It closed at 93, which was flat. Mm -hmm. um, and today got to just short of 100. But that stock's up some 280-odd percent in the last 12 months um, and people have been debating you know is it overdone has it gone too far it's certainly run very hard in the last couple of weeks but a bit of news we discussed uh, a Friday or two ago about how they were uh, talking about perhaps where they were dreaming about Brazil perhaps going in, into South America they were voted one of the top uh, 25 e-brands of the future globally going forward and what, what, what's also happening in that space is that they initially came into aimed at the the low income unbanked but I'm mid and upper income people are saying hang on I'm paying X and I can go to Capitec and pay in some cases 10 or 20 percent what I'm paying and I think suddenly they're catching a much broader base and they've got really good economics of scale in that they are really computerized very little paper going around that office so highly efficient very quickly, futures close out later on this week. How are you playing the markets ahead of that? Uh, standing back, I think futures close out is going to be a little bit damp. We're seeing it in this point, people are already positioning, not expecting a lot of fireworks. We'll see volume, but I don't think we're going to get much Simon, excitement. Thank you.